Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you. For those that don't know me, my name's Rory, and uh, I come to our church refresh with my wife and my gorgeous little boy, Abel. And um, I'm here to talk to you today. So firstly, I want to extend a massive welcome to the whole church family. It's so good to have you with us this morning. But also, I want to really extend a massive welcome to anybody who's new or exploring what Refresh Church looks like at the moment. So welcome. And I really hope that you get something from the service as a whole, but also what I have to say. So I'm going to start off this morning by praying. And I hope that we can meet God in what I have to bring you this morning. So let's pray. Lord, I ask that you would, cut, would be with us this morning and really rest on our hearts and open them to what you have to say. And I just want to pray that you would really give us a new sense of joy and give us a new sense of refreshment at this time. So much of what I'm motivated to say this morning is about trying to contact combat the idea that we're stuck in a negativity cycle and Lord I just ask that you would reach into that and really highlight what it is you want us to hear but also that you would bless us at this time and open doors and show us your joy. Amen. So this morning as I want to start um, I want to stop that's right I want us to take a moment and I want us to pray. Uh, now, I know we've just prayed, but I want you guys to pray for one other person, just one other person. Why? Because I'm aware that right now everything around us seems very negative. The media is full of negativity and people are confused and they feel lost and they're missing their loved ones. And I want us as a church to join together at this time to pray for someone, for just one person who we know who's struggling or vulnerable and flood this land with God's love. That's my hope and desire. So if you join with me, please pause the video and pray. Amen. So now that we've prayed and we've centered ourselves on God, let's get down to thinking about what I've been thinking about. Let's get down to exploring a little bit about what I'm going to talk to you this morning. And what God's put on my heart. So I've been thinking a lot about what I'm seeing on the TV and on social media. And I have to be honest, a lot of it makes me really, really sad. I look at the news and it's flooded with issues and negativity. Um, for starters, we've got America and all that's going on there uh, with the George Floyd thing, but also the leadership choices that seem to be being made at the moment. And regardless of where you come down on the issues, um, there's a lot there that's really very negative. Um, I saw a video this morning, uh, Thursday morning is when I'm recording this. I saw this video this morning of a pregnant lady in a car being shot at by, uh, shot at with pepper bullets by, the police and it makes me so sad that that's something that is going on in our world so there's that but then there's also obviously COVID-19 we still have rising death tolls both here and worldwide anger at people breaking lockdown rules confusion around the COVID guidance anger at lack of action anger at too much action worry about jobs, people's homes, people's livelihoods. And I think to myself, what has God got to say about this? And I prayed about it and thought about it. And I came up with two main ideas that I want to explore with you today. And I hope that they bring you some peace. The first of these ideas is that negativity and fake news has always been there. And it's always caused issues and always pushed God's people uh, in directions that they aren't comfortable with. But secondly, I want to think about what God does in those times and how God takes a step and then uh, calls us to take a step 
and then equips us for the task. As I said, the first thing I wanted to talk about this morning was the idea of negativity. Now, whilst there isn't uh, anything about fake news in the Bible, uh, you know, Mr. Trump's favorite saying, um, there is lots of things about negativity and about false talking and false prophets. And that's where I want to start, false prophets. It seems to me that there's some similarity, some link in the statements about these people. So here's a few statements that I've pulled together. False prophets are people who are sharing, who are saying they're from God and then sharing things which are not of him. They're sharing things that are harmful, things that lead others astray and ultimately things that damage our relationship with God. People who pass out opinion which others absorb and take on board and it fuels them and pushes them in certain directions. Now, to me, that seems very similar to a lot of what we absorb in our daily lives. Uh, a lot of negativity, a lot of things that are redirecting us away from God's heart. And actually, it occurs to me that these false prophets and these warnings are really common. There's over a hundred mentions of false prophets in the Bible. Now, for me, I'd never thought about that, that and the implication of that. But it strikes me that actually such a common warning appearing so many times must be something that we should be guarded against. And part of that is negativity, but also part of it is seeking God for clarity on what it is we are taking in. So I've done some more thinking about this and tried to link it more to where we are. And I've found some Bible passages that I think help me and hopefully help you to absorb a little bit of what I'm saying. So 2 Peter 2, 3 says, and in their, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. The first part, it also says their condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. But the bit that I really like is the, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Now, to me, that is very, um, very much the case with our current media. You know, we have a, a greed culture that very much is about showing us the negative stuff, showing us the stuff that we don't want in our lives. And it really echoes the feeling that we have today and the way that good news and even God news can so often be distorted by the constant stream of negativity that we have around us. It rots away at all that we know to be good and causes people to stoop into places of sadness, anger, depression, and more. And as many of you know, we have been here in Cambridgeshire for um, most of lockdown, uh, supporting Hannah's mother, uh, who, you know, has had a really hard year. I mean, we've all had a hard year, uh, but Hannah's mother lost her husband, and um, it's really important that she's had the support of her family and Hannah's twin sister Emma is a nurse and um, it was growing increasingly difficult to balance everything for everybody so we came to help and support and uh, try and make life a bit easier for and and f uh, indirectly for Emma um, but one of the things uh, that has really motivated me to talk this morning was when Jude first asked me to talk um i was sitting with hannah's mum and we were talking and she said to me you should really do your talk on good um, fake news and what god has to say about it and actually that's motivated me from the very start not only that but i've pushed into it a bit more thought about it prayed about it conversations i've had with members of the church all seem to be pointing me towards this and i really feel that god has has given me some insight into this but one of the things that i really wanted to draw on that has highlighted this and the need to talk about this subject 
is something that is part of Hannah's mum's daily routine. And that is watching Good Morning Britain. Now, she gets up and watches Good Morning Britain pretty much every morning. Uh, and I have to say, the negativity pushed out by this show is really worrying. It's really sad. They have a constant berating and ripping apart of everything that comes onto the show. Everybody is questioned and analysed and challenged in often a negative way. And frankly, it's tiresome and demoralising. And I know that it's not the only example of this, but it's one that's become part of my everyday life. And at present, I feel the impact of this growing. This negativity is often what steers our conversations through the day, whether it's going from news broadcast to news broadcast or something that we see on social media. And more often than not, it's negative. And I can't help but think it's something that we should be steering away from. Peter's words of greed leading to exploitation through false words is often so true of so much of our present media. And we surround ourselves with this and leave a little space, and leave little space for God and God's word. Especially at this present time, as I've said, where we're spending more and more time than perhaps we usually would watching the news to see what's happening, what the guidance is, or scouring social media. And it's hard to keep the negativity at arm's length. And what I really want to do this morning is cast that off and challenge us not only to not consume false words, but to remember that our bodies are God's temple and he dwells in us. We must fill them with things that mirror him and glorify him. In Jeremiah, it says the prophets give false prophecies and the priests rule with an iron hand. Worse yet, my people like it that way. But what will you do when it comes to an end? And I ask us the same question. What will we do if all we consume is negativity? Time and time again, God has sent messengers to speak into darkness and bring light, even where it seemed impossible. So I say, let the light shine and seek God and what pleases him amongst the negativity. If we push and seek, we will find stories of joy and hope. And it is so often our duty not just to consume them, but to share them with others. Here's one thing that lifted me recently. And firstly, I must apologize to you, Morris. Uh, I didn't watch your stream on Pentecost morning uh, because I was blown away by the fact that there was two back-to-back -back church services on BBC One at that time. The first of which was led by Rich and Judith from the Pioneer Network. And the second was a more traditional C of E service. And it really struck me that at this time where we have so much negativity, so much worry, so much fear, their center stage on BBC One was God punching through the darkness. And it encourages me so much to see this type of thing. And it is so good to see it not just on TV, but center stage on BBC One for all to see. And it took over the broadcasting for several hours. It's truly amazing. But it's not the only example that we're hearing at the moment of God moving. Peter Grieg recently said that an online Christian bookshop had seen a 55% increase in sales of the Bible in April this year. His movement 24-7 prayer has seen more and more people turning to prayer at this time and asking for help with that. We've heard recently that Online Alpha has had more than a thousand people sign up to its new online course. And the Good Book Company has seen an unprecedented amount of, company, of copies of Where is the God in the Coronavirus fly off their shelves. Not just that, but in a not just in a wider context, but also in a much more uh, micro context, 
community focused. We've heard stories from Holly about the work she's done in the home. And also I've been speaking to Rob as part of our Zoom group uh, and the stories that he's been sharing of his new lockdown role, which has been delivering uh, medicine for the local pharmacy. And it's given him a great opportunity to speak, to serve and to love those most vulnerable in our community. And I'm sure there are many other examples that we could talk about. And I say, let's share them. Not just share them, but celebrate them. Because God is at work and he is moving and it is exciting. It's something we should shout about. God's joy and life-giving message of Christ in us is more infectious than any virus and it will last long after lockdown has lifted. So now, now is the time for each of us to push into God, to seek what he has for us. So I implore you to seek out his prophets, read from their stories, flood yourself in worship, and explore what other Christians are offering and bathe in God's light and then share what you've learned. And if we do all of this, we will not just survive, but we will grow. I think back to Pharaoh in walking, sorry, I think back to Moses walking into Pharaoh's court and having to pit himself against the court magicians. And this is a story that was brought to life for me. So at a young age, watching things like the Prince of Egypt, and it's a part of the story that really is not a massive part, but there's something that happens there, which is so important. These court magicians that Pharaoh wheels out, try to prove that their gods can do anything that our God can. And time and time again, Moses pulls it out of the bag. Not it, but God. Pulls God out of the bag and God blows them away. And I feel like this picture we see so many times in the Bible. And it's something that we often brush over. Every time negativity is stacked against us, God blows us out of the water. The story of the furnace, the lion's den, the ark, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and ultimately the cross are but a few examples of how negativity was stacked up against God's people and God pushed through and won the day. Negativity and false words have always been there. They have always been stacked against God's people, but his word and his action has always burst forth to win the day. And today is no different. This brings me on to my second point. I can't very easily say push into God and share if I don't talk about the promises that God has made to bless you through this. The Bible is full of stories of God's people not feeling capable of the task God asks them. And actually, I'm going to go back to the one I mentioned before, Moses. Now, we all know the story of Moses and how he fled Egypt and moved far, far away and essentially gave up his life uh, and gave up who he was. But God found him in the wilderness and spoke to him through a burning bush. And Moses was racked with guilt, with negativity, with all the negative feelings that we could possibly imagine. His self-worth was zero but God chose him. God chose to send him back to Egypt to save his people. And firstly, Moses is in awe of God's presence and he falls to his knees. But then he protests God's choice. He says firstly in Exodus 3.11, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And God's answer to those very simply is, I will be with you. 
Even this isn't enough to encourage Moses that he can do it. His question really shouldn't have been, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? But who am I to be chosen by you, God? But he doesn't. He doesn't believe. He doesn't have faith. He has no self-confidence. And he goes on to protest four more times, saying, what does he have to say to people? What if they don't like what he brings? What if they don't listen? What if he can't speak? But every time God had an answer, and essentially it was, believe and trust in me because I've got this. God took a broken man who was consumed with negativity and self-doubt and used him to carry his people out of Egypt. And not just that, but to build a nation. It's easy for us to throw up barriers to what God can do. But he calls us out and he calls us to take the step. Because our barriers are minute to God. In Matthew 14, Jesus walks on water and Peter, filled with confidence, calls on Jesus to call him out onto the water. Let him walk with him. And as soon as Peter gets the yes from Jesus and steps out onto the water, he takes but a few steps and starts to sink because fear overcomes him. Fear and self-doubt and self-disbelief and negativity flood over him. And Jesus saves him. Now, we know that Jesus says, you of little faith. But what we would have expected Jesus to say is, oh, Peter, are you OK? Are you well? But he doesn't. Now, Peter was, a scare, was scared and didn't believe he was safe, even in the arms of Christ. So what hope do we have? Well, like Moses, Peter was a simple man. His self-doubt and negativity were clear for everyone to see but jesus built his church upon him we've just celebrated pentecost and that same man who was so afraid right in front of jesus stood and preached to thousands because god's plan had burst forth he had given him an ultimate gift his spirit and that is a gift that each of us can have now, he preached to, uh, to thousands of people and thousands became Christians that day because of that. But I'm sure Peter's self-doubt didn't go away. But God believes in those who have self-doubt. God knows your capacity is far beyond your own knowledge. Even the smallest act is celebrated by God. Here's an example. In Luke 15, 7, it says, in the same way, there are more, is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. The one is far more celebrated than the many. The smallest thing is big to God. So I say, let's spread our stories, our good news, for God is with us. And there are more than 34 examples in the New Testament alone where God promises to equip those he has called. An example is Hebrews 13, 21. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. There are other examples as well. 1 Timothy 6.12, 1 Corinthians 12.4-7, Romans 12.1-21. I could go on. And if you want the rest of the list, then please contact me. I'd be happy to share it with you. God calls us and he equips us to stand against negativity and bring his word, his light and his love to the many. Now, I'm going to leave you uh, and thank you for listening, but I want to leave you with something to think about. 
I've found a song which is quite old now, but it's called God of Justice and it's by Tim Hughes. And the reason I've picked this song is because it speaks clearly about being called out. And I want the words of this song to fill you at this time. But before I go, there's one last thing I want to say. Believe in yourself because God believes in you. And that is more than enough. So share your stories and let's, God, let's bring God's light and love to our community enjoy the song and may god bless you at this time and i hope that we will be together again very soon amen